Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Mocklin. Um, I serve as the Assistant Director for Speech and Debate for Durham Academy in North Carolina. I also serve as a staff writer for Champion Briefs with Public Forum Debate. Um, and this is the March 2025 topic analysis video. Um, the March topic that students around the country and world will be debating um, is resolved in the United States, the benefits of the use of generative artificial intelligence in education outweigh the harms. Super excited to be an individual that has the ability to record um, the topic analysis that will be seen by students. As an educator myself, I think this is a very timely topic um, that students want to debate and potentially judges want to hear. Um, I'll say the past couple of topics have been topics that have highly relied on questions of uniqueness and updates based on what is happening in our world, um, specifically in February uh, with the ICC um, and then in January with the Somaliland topic. Uh, this topic, while hopefully not as critical in our updates, is one that is a current event uh, that individuals want to listen to and want to engage with. Um, ultimately, I think that this is a topic, as I said, that students want to know about, uh, but it's a topic that I, from the get-go when reading the topics list, was very interested in um, because generative artificial intelligence is something so new. When you think about stances and topics that were 10 years ago, 20 years ago in the activity, generative artificial intelligence wasn't one. So it's really important to consider how AI and specifically how generative AI has changed both in the confines of debate, in the confines of education, but also our society in general. Um, I found it really helpful when reconstructing and completing this topic analysis to kind of break down uh, the analysis into three components. The first of those is the strategic considerations that teams should take into account. Uh, the second is to look at the pro side of the debate and some key arguments there. And then finally, looking at some con arguments also. I think it's important to consider before getting into the topic analysis how judges will interact with this topic. Um, many judges in the activity and all judges should serve in an educator capacity because they are inherently the educational adult in the back of the room. Is that always true? Some would differ, but it's important to consider how judges will engage with and interact with arguments because everybody, while they want to admit it or not, has explicit and implicit bias. Me sitting in the back of the room as a teacher who's taught in both a public and private school setting will have a different perspective than an individual who has never served as an educator in a formalized capacity. That means that individuals' personal beliefs about AI might come to the forefront of their calculus. So it's really important that debaters simplify and synthesize their stances on specific issues within the topic literature and within the arguments they make. Can we completely remove bias from the equation ever? No, but I would highly encourage debaters as we kind of delve into the topic today to consider what this will look like for them. So let's start with the strategy. Um, I will say, um, as a former policy debater, um, this is the first time in a minute we've not had a policy uh, resolution. Um, this is a resolution that goes back to the very crux of what I learned public forum to be back in the day, uh, not that long ago, to be honest, which was the costs versus the benefits. It's a benefits versus harms written resolution, um, which means that they need to kind of present their arguments. And I use this metaphor quite frequently with students, like a set of scales. At the end of the debate, the pro team is trying to prove that the benefits outweigh and the con team is trying to prove that the harms outweigh and the judge should evaluate the debate like a set of scales. It does not mean that either team on this topic are gonna be presenting specific policy actions, but instead it's allowing teams to discuss the merits of generative AI rather than specific policies that can be implemented with AI. So that's a really important thing to consider. Um, another component to consider with this topic is specifically how it specifies the United States. Um, it's important for teams to consider that it doesn't rule out the use of international examples, but it does mean you have to have a response to the fact that X country is different from the United States and why should we engage with or disengage with that specific example. Um, it shouldn't be the sole warranting behind why generative AI is beneficial or harmful, uh, but instead could be used to discuss. Another consideration, and you might be guessing we're kind of just going down some key phrasing and verbiage in the topic, is the phrase generative artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is really commonly heard, especially just like buzzwords we hear in the media, we're hearing it more in education, ironically, hence the topic. Um, I found the best definition to actually be from IBM, um, and I'm going to read that directly because I think it's actually a really clear synthesis of what generative AI means, um, which is 
Generative AI, sometimes called Gen AI, is artificial intelligence that create, can create original content, such as text, images, video, audio, or software code in response to a user's prompt or request. Um, I think this is a really clear definition. Of course, there are going to be debaters that find more nuanced versions of this definition, or they specify specifically for their arguments. I think this definition is really helpful because it talks about the idea that it's not just like the creation of content, but it comes from the response of a prompt or a request. I also think it's important to consider that there is many examples of generative AI that people might not think about. Um, thinking about things such as like AI powered chatbots that are used in like customer service, um, also used in like educational platforms where there's AI integration, um, content creation, where that is like images that are created for like marketing, um, applications that are used in healthcare, um, things like ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot that are helped with like text generation or writing assistance. Those are all examples. If you just type in examples of generative AI into Google, that list rapidly populates, but there are many examples of it. I'm definitely going to encourage on a strategic front that teams should certainly include examples because some people might not know really what Gen AI is in the context of education, might only know it in the context of marketing or social media or what that means. Um, so it's important to consider that we should have examples that specifically warrant the claims that we're making on both sides of that topic. Um, but it's important to kind of keep that in mind when thinking about your strategy. The final component that I really want to talk about with strategy before moving on to some, some specific arguments is that this topic is specifically in the context of education. It says in the wording, in education. Um, so there are two questions that I think that teams need to consider uh, when evaluating both sides of this debate, which is the first is like, how would you define education? Is education a question of knowledge building? Is education a question of like a grade based system? Is education like a holistic narrative? Is it the Department of Education? What is education? And teams certainly need to have some type of an answer to that to frame why education is important or why it is not important. The second question I'd ask is what is the purpose of education specifically within the United States? Um, I would say that the purpose of education is different um, based on the country. It's also different based on the administration. Uh, but based on what we are currently seeing in the United States, why do people get involved in education? Is it because it's mandatory? Is it because of the job market? Is it because of the economy? Is it because of post-secondary opportunities? And those are the questions that I think based on the side of the debate, you should probably have some clear answers to because they're probably going to justify the specific stance that you take in the debate. Um, and those are kind of the holistic considerations. Um, I kind of think though, before delving into the specifics on each side, there are kind of two strategies that teams should consider on each side of the debate specifically. Um, I think the pro team on this topic needs to be considering that it is a question of how education is always changing. So like as educators and as an educator myself, I'm aware that there's always this nuance that we need to always pivot. We always need to change our educational model. We need to change our methods of instruction uh, because we don't want to create a system that is hurting or failing students. Um, so definitely it could be a key motivating reason why generative AI is beneficial because we need to keep up with the changing times. Um, however, the con side that's probably a strategic consideration is that there is a lack of regula regulation in AI, both in education, but also beyond that, which means that the con team can certainly create an argumentation line that is like, if there is no regulation of AI, then how can those benefits that you say truly manifest in education when it could lead to like incorrect content or falsified information or misinformation or whatever terminology you want to use. But those two overarching considerations are certainly important to keep in mind. So we're going to start um, on the argumentation side of things by looking at the pro side. I'm going to specifically talk about two main lines of argumentation. Might end up delving into a couple of more, but I really want to keep this topic analysis as synthesized as possible um, to allow you to get some knowledge, but also to create your own brainstorming. I say this with every topic that while I can spew information at you, the best way to get knowledge of arguments is by doing research. It does not just mean and I know this is ironic that we go to AI and ask it for the topic areas or ask it for the stock arguments, because that's not really understanding the nuances of the argument or getting the best research. So I think the first pro argument that I think to kind of keep in mind, and I know kind of hypocritical after what I just said, but it's the idea that generative AI can support personalized learning approaches. Um, when students have specific need, needs, whether it is a customization of learning platforms or learning models, um, it is helpful to have more than just a one size fits all approach. Um, using tools in the classroom that allow like, 
for students that need X accommodation or for students that need X style of learning to help them succeed in school, um, generative AI can support those approaches in a way that an educator can't always do when there are 30 students in a classroom. Now, is that the experience of every educator? No, uh, but trying to accommodate all of those needs and wants in a classroom is hard. It's something that educators, if they're judging, would certainly sympathize with. Um, I think there's some really good impacts here that can talk about how personalized learning is actually key to helping with education on an individualized level, um, which I think could be really strong um, regarding, again, those central questions of what is education. Um, I think the second one is about assistance to educators. I will transparently say that like AI has been a helpful tool for me as an educator, whether it is proofing rubrics or establishing like course descriptions. Um, there are many ways that educators, and there's many resources you can find or statistics that say this, that educators can use it from grading assessments to meeting planning to synthesizing notes to creating units. Those are all ways that educators can be helped in ways that allow teachers to engage with students in a more interactive manner. So rather than me spending my time working on grading a checklist rubric, I could spend my time having one-on-one -on -one conversations. Now, I don't personally do that, but that's definitely something that some educators do, and that's well within their prerogative to do so. Um, there's a really good study from Harvard University that talks about how generative AI can be used in the classroom. It gives a lot of different examples, which means that the impact scenario from that could manifest into a lot of different things, from relationship building to burnout from teachers, which leads to teacher shortages. It could talk about how students get benefits um, across the board because they're learning both in the classroom with a teacher, but also outside with a generative AI assistant. Assistant, there are lots of different approaches that teams could take on the pro side of the topic. Flipping to the con side and talking about some of those, because again, the con side is focusing on how the harms outweigh those benefits that we've just talked about. Um, inherently, the best way to prove uh, that you should vote con is probably the fact that AI leads us to ask lots and lots of questions that the pro team might not have answers to. Um, some questions that even center on the debate, which could even be cross questions, is like, how has generative AI impacted speech and debate? Some people are going to say inherently negative things about that, whether it has meant that students rely on it too much or whatever that means, or like, what are the consequences for this misuse within speech and debate? And I think that's a really interesting line of questioning that's not necessarily an argument, but how has generative AI impacted our activity? And what does that mean in the construct of education if we were to consider speech and debate an educational activity, which I think many people would. However, let's talk about two specific arguments real quick. The first of those um, is a question of over-reliance and dependency because both educators, as I was just talking about, but also students um, will turn to generative AI instead of educators, which means that there could be an over-reliance on AI over teachers, which one is bad because it could eliminate the teaching profession and just lead, lead us to getting taught by AI all the time. Second, there's a question of like that eliminates any intrapersonal or interpersonal connections with uh, like faculty or teachers. But the third thing I would say with that is it means that there could be misinformation because sometimes the information information and AI isn't reliable. Um, I think there's lots of different impact scenarios. I don't really want to delve into those specifically because you kind of can take the thread of those, which could be what that means for the teaching profession, what that means for student learning or success, what that means for like our information gathering and our education and our like knowledge as a whole. Those are kind of just some like rough ideas I have that I think could definitely be helpful. I think the second con argument is one that you'll probably hear a lot, which is about how AI and generative AI would hurt learning for students um, because it would hurt the process of learning because students, even in activities like speech and debate, are often challenged to think critically or engage in topics and not just be spewed information and learn um, because programs and like just like sending information to like Microsoft Copilot or ChatGPT doesn't allow students to have the learning or like learning models, like things like pedagogical models that teachers use for reasons um, are really important. Um, Harvard Business Publishing Education is actually linked in my topic analysis that's written um, that gives some specific examples about how it uniquely harms student instruction. Um, and this means that it could harm like the overall philosophy of education in the United States. It could harm students post-secondary opportunities. It could harm lots of different things that impact students as a whole. Um, but again, this topic has a lot of material on both sides. This was a really quick and succinct topic analysis, um, and it only highlighted two arguments for each side. I will say I think a great thing about this, and I actually have done a lot of work on this topic with some other students um, in my classes, has been the idea that there are lots of arguments on this topic that will be changing based on 
how generative AI is constantly changing, which I think will be really interesting to see how teams use this in the month of March, especially when lots of schools have spring break. I think that some debaters kind of sit back in March, um, but I would encourage you, especially for schools that have district or state competitions, um, to certainly engage with this topic as much as possible, because beyond the scope of debate, it's just a genuinely interesting topic that I think will be really impactful in the future years of both speech and debate, but also education in general. Um, I wish you all the best of luck on this topic and have a great rest of your season.